Hey everyone, welcome to Strong Mind, Strong Body. I'm your host, Angie Miller, and today we are going to talk about what you can do in the kitchen. In other words, some simple trips to make meal prep your friend. Okay, meal prep has never really been my friend, but I've been to a couple of cooking events recently. My friend Talia is from Italy and she is a chef and she is amazing. And at these events, I met my guest today and her name is Jenna Lee Rude. And she is the founder of a company called Raised on Plants. So Jenna is a meal prep queen. She has a couple of littles. And I know that she is, according to my friend Talia, the best person to speak to how to meal prep. So Jenna, I'm going to bring you in and just say hello. How are you doing? So glad to be on here today. Thanks for having me, Angie. All right. So Jenna and I are both here in the Charlotte area. As a matter of fact, Jenna's mom lives almost right around the corner from me. So um, small world sometimes. So Jenna, um, why don't you give us a little bit of a background? You've got this company called, um, you know, Raised on Plants. Give us a little background about your education and how you started this company. Sure, of course. Well, I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina, but I actually went to UCLA for college and that's where I met my husband, Jake. Uh, I have a background in wellness really because my family has been passionate about it forever. I was raised predominantly plant-based by my mom, Tony Branner, who has her master's in exercise physiology and has, be, uh, has been an educator of wellness uh, for over three decades now. So I had no, no choice but to grow up passionate about this. And um, that didn't change as I you know, went to school, graduated, and started really my career in the wellness industry. Um, always wanted to serve people with, of course, education um, first, and then solutions and resources after. And that has led our family to a number of different ways that we do that. Um, one is our Health Made Simple brand. And another is Raised on Plants, which is our app and community of moms within that just launched uh, this past year. All right. So, and I like that. I like solutions. Everybody likes solutions. We all know that, you know, maybe the problem would be that not everybody knows how to meal prep or that we're not really sure how to do a plant-based diet and uh, do easy recipes that make it fun to be plant-based and doable to be plant-based. And so that's why I brought you on. So Jenna, I'm curious, what are your favorite meals to meal prep or your favorite things that you love to meal prep? Well, my favorite meals to prep are actually breakfast and lunch because I truly believe that saves our family the most money and the most time during our week. And then part of being able to actually throw together a quick meal is cooking or prepping ingredients ahead of time. So, you know, when you go to the grocery store and you buy a bunch of things, instead of just throwing them in your fridge and keeping them wrapped in the packaging or however they came, um, actually roasting a big tray of veggies, pressure cooking beans or some sort of whole grain, and uh, really just washing produce like berries or cutting up carrots, peppers, cucumbers, storing them in the fridge so that it's really easy to access. Okay. And I like that idea about roasting the vegetables when you first get them home, because how many times do you go to the farmer's market or you go to the store and five days goes by, you open up that thing of broccoli that you bought and it's gross and it no longer looks like broccoli. Um, but had I maybe just taken a few minutes to roast it ahead of time, then I would have had those probably to munch on all week long. So breakfast and lunch are your two favorite uh, meals to meal prep. And so why don't you, before we even go into that though, of like why and what you like to meal prep, because I know one of my favorites was how you talked about salads. Um, I have to tell this story, Jenna. So when I met Jenna and she talked about um, meal prepping salads and she said her favorite thing is to put it in a mason jar. And she talked about how to build the salad out. And I laughed and I said, oh, I thought that was only in the airport at the farmer's market machines. And, you know, that was that was a joke. But I travel a lot and there are those machines now. And I believe they are called farmer's market where your salads come in a faux like plastic mason jar. So never thought about making one myself. But um so before we get into those items, though, do you have a grocery list that you reference when you shop so that you don't do that maddening thing 
where you get home and you want to make something and you're like, oh, if only I had that one day. Yes. So that is key. Um, I feel like when um, we are kind of meal prepping or looking at what we're going to eat that week, a lot of it is figuring out what you're going to make first before you even think about buying stuff at the store. So we build a grocery list off of that, off of what we know we're going to make that week. And we have a whole system that we use called the six simple steps to meal prep. Um, we have a whole course on it in our app actually in a little refrigerator chart and it makes it really fun and simple. And, um, and that helps us figure out what we're going to make. And then we build the list off of that because you're absolutely right. Angie, <laughs> if you just go into the store with no plan, you're going to end up spending a ton of money and then you're going to get home and have no idea what to cook for dinner, even that first night still. Right. So your goal then is you plan what you're going to eat first. And then once you know what you're going to eat that week, then you build your list according to what you're going to eat. Okay. Yeah, correct. Or I would say if you are able to shop at your local farmer's market, a great thing to do would be to go there first, see what looks fresh, see what looks in season, see what your kids are excited to eat that week. And then you can actually build out your meals based off a few ingredients that you found. Oh, okay. Well, that's another great idea. Yeah. Cause I was just at the farmer's market this weekend and, um, noticed that the avocados didn't do so well. So, uh, but everything else did quite well. So, um, let's break it down. We, we have to start with the salad because you went through it so fast the other night that I was like, hold on, can you do build salads for, for people who aren't super quick in the kitchen here? So let's start with, if you were going to meal prep salads, um, you know, give us the step-by-step -step and the why and the how. Okay. Sure. Sure. So, well, salads are a great example because come a lot of ingredients have to come together to actually make the salad. And truly you can get your entire kitchen completely dirty <laughs> just from trying to make one salad for yourself at lunch. So I do think it's something that can save you so much time. You can get all of that um, into these beautiful mason jars at the beginning of the week. And so when you open your fridge, you're so happy because you just pull that jar, dump it in a big bowl, and you have lunch right there. You're only really getting two items dirty. Um, so that's why I love it. Also, if you go to work um, at an office, it's really easy to bring that with you. Um, and it's just fun for the whole family. So if you have kids, this is a great activity. Um, the jars themselves, what we do, um, and I'm going to use an example today of our mandarin sesame salad that we have as a recipe in our app. That's one of my favorites. I feel like I could eat it over and over again. Um, so we're going to picture a beautiful mandarin sesame salad in our, in our minds. And I'm going to teach you how to build that up. You would actually um, start with the dressing in the bottom. So we do a mandarin sesame ginger dressing with the salad. We would put that in the bottom just a little bit, um, maybe an inch or so, depending on the size of your mason jar. I like the really big ones because I like to eat my salads out of a mixing bowl. <laughs> um, and then from there, you're going to add anything that would marinate really well in that jar. So for this particular salad, I would do mandarin oranges, um, some cucumbers, and a little bit of edamame. I really love the frozen edamame that you can get um, at lots of stores now that's so easy mm -hmm run it underwater and it kind of defaws. And then from there, you're going to keep building up um, your ingredients. So next I would do the broccoli slaw that we like adding to that salad, which is a mix of broccoli stems and um, carrots. And then tofu. We love making our peanut sauce, air fried tofu. If you have an air fryer, yay. It's one of our, our, our amazing um, tools that we love and use all the time in our kitchen. Um, so that would go in next. And then you're going to pack in the lettuce. And I mean as airtight as possible. <laughs> pack, 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 pack as much as you can get in there um, so that it's airtight and that it actually will last and keep in your fridge. And then on the very, very top in that little space before you put the lid on your mason jar, you're going to put anything that would be kind of a crunchy addition to your salad. So uh, for this particular one, we do slivered almonds on the top and then we just screw on the jar and pop it in the fridge. That sounds amazing. How long does it stay fresh then? Uh, depends on your ingredients. If you make it right when you first buy your ingredients and if hopefully they're fresh um, coming from the store wherever you got them, then it'll last, I would say anywhere between five and seven days in the fridge, as long as you pack it in really tight. And of course, um, as long as you're not putting an ingredient in there that's gonna um, 
be oxidizing really quickly and easily like avocado <laughs> or if you're doing kind of a more fruit for forward salad um, some fruits can oxidize pretty quickly um, too so for anything like that we like to save that on the side and just um, after you dump it into the bowl and mix it all around you can you know cut some avocado up and put it on top if that's something you want to add um, to your salad, but I would say five to seven days. If not, um, if, I mean, I think you'll eat them faster than they'll go bad <laughs> is my prediction. Right. Well, I like that idea. I think that's great because you're right. I mean, salads are actually kind of a pain to make. I mean, they're a ton of fun, but it's a ton of ingredients, a ton of chopping, and it actually takes a lot of time to knock out one salad. And so to your point, if you've got five great big, large Mason jars and you can do, um, one, time period where you're making, it takes just as long to make one as it does to make five. If you're already getting into the ingredients, I think that's a great idea. So five to seven days for that one. So what else do you like to meal prep? Give us another one that is fun and easy to do for meal prepping. I think breakfast is really fun to meal prep. Um, so we love to do overnight oats. If you've ever made those before in Mason jars, because again, you can kind of create that little assembly line system. And I have two young girls, a five-year-old and an almost two-year-old. Um, and so anything that's, you know, good where they can't really mess it up, <laughs> if they're dumping chia seeds and flax seeds and all kinds of oats, you know, in these jars, um, you know, I do the things that they could mess up like too much, you know, brown sugar, maple syrup, whatever, adding to give it a little sweetness. Um, but, uh, that's a really fun one. And there's so many recipes, um, different flavor combinations you can use. You just do the oats, some other ingredients, and then you pour some plant milk in there and the oats actually, um, overnight in the fridge, basically quote unquote cook. <laughs> um, so you don't have to actually heat them up, um, or cook them the next day. You just eat them right out of the jar. You can of course heat them up if you like to have it more, um, served warm to your family. Um, so that's a fun one. Uh, we also love doing any kind of burrito bowl or uh, um, we call burritos in jars because <laughs> we'll do, you know, some yummy uh, rice, like maybe cilantro lime rice, some black beans, and then layer up those veggies, maybe a tray of roasted veggies with sweet potatoes and zucchini, add in some pico de gallo, add in some lettuce at the top, and then again, save um, that avocado to cut into the bowl, you know, once you're ready to eat it. Um, but that's another fun one. If you're not a big salad person and you, you, um, you know, want to go with something a little more hearty and a little more filling, if you have um, people in your family that, uh, that need that or want that, then that's a great option too. Well, it's funny because you're the first person that I've ever heard talk about meal prep that I thought, okay, I think maybe that does have some value. Because again, to your point, if you're going to make one, you might as well make five and then you might as well have it done for the week. And I think that there is a lot to be said for meal prep when you think in terms of simplicity and time saved in the kitchen. And, you know, you get more bang for your buck, more bang for the time in the kitchen gets you more meals. So I like that idea a lot. So you're doing the burrito bowls, you've got the salads, you've got the overnight oats. I always read about overnight oats, but I've never actually tried them. You said put some plant-based milk in there. I'm assuming you could put almond milk in there. You could put soy milk, depending on what people like. Of course, yes. Whatever your preference is, of course. Um, our, our favorite, I think, is either the almond milk or oat milk these days. I'm a coconut milk girl, too. I love the flavor of coconut, so we'll do that sometimes. Um, but another thing that we actually love doing, and this might help you, is whenever you um, are cooking anything in your kitchen, just make double or triple the recipe. <laughs> um, and if you have a bigger family, you might have to even do more than that. But what, whatever you can fit in your pot or in your oven, make that because then you have leftovers on leftovers and that will save you so much time and again, money as you go through the week. And if you get tired of eating the same thing at some point, which you probably will, um, then just put it in the freezer. And then that's how you're kind of building up these save the day supplies that um, come in handy when you are standing there at 5 p.m. and have no idea what you're going to make for dinner. Um, you can pull something out of the freezer or um, have something on hand that you've already made you know, a previous week. So that's another tip that we love to share with families. 
I think that's a, you know, that's a key issue is I think for a lot of us, it's that same thing. If we go to the grocery store, we're not really sure what we're going to get because we don't really have in mind what we're going to make. And then the other one is what you just said that you get to the kitchen, it's five o'clock. You're like, okay, I'm starving. What am I going to make? And if you do, like I'm cooking a huge pot of rice right now. And I always like to have rice sitting around. I like to have certain things sitting around that I know I can kind of mix and match. I can make different types of uh, bowls, that type of thing with those ingredients. So I think that's a great idea. When it comes to meal prepping, do you have any um, been there, done that? I've made that mistake or things that people run into when they try to meal prep? Yeah, I would say um, just being a little too ambitious with it. <laughs> um, sometimes, you know, I'll have these grand plans of prepping everything for the whole week and having it all organized. And I'm pretty much just setting myself up for failure um, as a busy mom. And so I think um, just choosing, you know, one or two things that you can make on a Sunday night or whenever your kind of your week starts for your family and then building off of that as the week goes, or even like I said before, just prepping the ingredients so that, like you just said with the rice, like just so you have stuff on hand that you can get creative and throw meals together um, and just, you know, be prepared for the inevitable moment that um, you need a quick meal. Um, but a lot of a lot of your success is going to be in the, the planning part of it, um, not even necessarily the prepping part. It's actually knowing like, we are going to eat this this week because then you're not trying to be creative when you have kids dangling off your body or when you're running home from work post working out and you're sweaty and starving. Like you have to know what the plan is um, and that will keep you from just door dashing a random thing or um, just, you know, eating something that maybe you're not excited to eat. That's not going to be nourishing for your body because it was just quick and easy. Yeah. Well, and I think also knowing how to put the ingredients into the jar, like when you were talking about, you know, what would go into the actual dressing before, because obviously you want, you don't want to pack that, that lettuce down there or that spinach down there because it's going to get all really super gross. So, um, but I think that there's probably some trial and errors in trying to food prep and then realizing, oh, I think I maybe shouldn't have put that so close to whatever ingredient it might have been. Um, is there anything else that you think is super easy to meal prep? That's really nutritious. That stores well in the refrigerator. You did the burrito bowls. You did the overnight oats. You did the salads. What would be another one? Another one that I just did this weekend. Um, I made a pasta salad that was with actual like, green lentil pasta that also has like, spinach and kale and a bunch of other um, veggies in the pasta itself. And nowadays there's so many different brands, um, of pastas that are actually made with really quality whole food ingredients that you can find. So I would say starting with a base of that and then adding in fresh tomatoes. I added fresh tomatoes from my gardens. Um, I added, uh, basil, fresh basil from my gardens. I did um, pine nuts. I did um, just all kinds of stuff in there. Some olives. Um, I mean, just, I, I basically made it like a Mediterranean version of a pasta salad and used, um, just some, you know, white wine vinegar, a little bit of olive oil, some fresh garlic, sea salt, and it was super fresh and delicious right after I made it, but then it stored well. And I swear I ate that a whole weekend. <laughs> Jake was like, are you still eating that? I was like, yes, it's so good. It's so delicious. So um, oh, I put fresh spinach in there. Yeah, it was just a bunch of fresh spinach too. And it kind of wilted, but it was still fresh and nice because I didn't actually overcook it or do anything. I just let the warm pasta kind of heat it up. Um, and and that was a really great thing. So I know I'll be making that more often now, um, especially if there's a family gathering or you're on a you know park date or a picnic or traveling and you need something that you know travels really well in the airplane. Um, I think that's a great one. Well, and if I had to recap, and if I was to think about the top reasons to meal prep, I'd say it saves a ton of time, obviously, because you're saving time in the kitchen and getting everything ready ahead of the week. And you're not driving home having that 
um, that feeling of, oh my gosh, what am I going to get ready in a short period of time? And everybody's going to be starving when I walk in the door. So you, you avoid that kind of like crabbiness that kind of sets in when everyone's like, what's going to be on the table? And you're like, I don't know. I just got off of work. So I think it saves time. It also saves money. Um, it saves you from having to do last minute, last ditch efforts, which usually result in really unhealthy things. Is there any other thing that I'm missing about why you would be such a huge advocate for meal prepping? Honestly, you covered a lot of them. I think the last one would just be that it's really fun and it can be a great way to get your family involved in the process of fueling your body well and cooking together. And I think that creates memories. Um, I say if you are not a parent and you can um, invite a friend over, uh, we actually in our neighborhood sometimes have salad in the jar parties where a couple women will come over and we'll just all bring some ingredients and prep salads together for the week. And it's super fun. Um, it's a great way to just kind of create community bonding amongst um, your, um, your, your friend group and, um, and then empower, you know, your own family to, um, to, to, to feel really good about how the week is getting started. Um, so I say, everyone do your very best. Just try to, you know, take it one baby step at a time and, and see, um, see what it can do for you. Yeah, for sure. And even to your point, you can get your kids involved. You can get your spouse involved. You can get friends involved. You know, people have cookie parties around Christmas time. You could have meal prep parties. I think that makes a lot of sense where everybody brings different ingredients and people will come up with ideas that you didn't think about. So um, are there any questions that you get when terms of meal prepping that I haven't asked you or that you think are worth considering? I think the question that I get a lot is <laughs> when I start to put together what my family is going to eat for the week, my mind just blanks out. And this is a lot of my mom friends have shared this with me. They just are like, I, I, I have felt this way too. Like I can't remember a single thing that I know how to cook. I don't know what my family is going to eat this week. And it just feels overwhelming. And so, um, you know, we've created just a simple like six step kind of thought process that you take yourself through um, one being think of a soup or a stew that you, you love, or that sounds good to you this week. So something that could be made in a crock pot, that's a good place to start. Once you have that written down, like, okay, we're going to make that this week. Then you're going to think of a salad or some sort of a power bowl. Like we talked about the burrito bowls, right? Something that could be in a Mason jar or, um, that's going to have a lot of variety of colors, lots of different fruits and veggies in it. That's going to help you eat the rainbow. Um, the third step is going to be a supper recipe. Everything starts with S if you're catching on. Um, <laughs> supper, because we're in the South, I have to say supper, um, that your family loves. That's a guaranteed hit because you definitely want to have a guaranteed hit on the menu so that you don't get stuck making food that no one's eating, right? Um, I also encourage you, that would be a great place to also choose a new recipe, maybe something that's plant-based that you haven't tried yet. It's a great way to kind of introduce new variety and new things to your family as well. So usually we put, pick two in that category. And then um, the fourth one is having um, smoothie ingredients on hand at all times, because you can always make a fresh smoothie as a great breakfast option or a snack. Um, and also thinking through breakfast in that category too. Are we going to do overnight oats? Are we going to do um, chia pudding? Are we going to make avocado toast? What is the plan for breakfast? The fifth one is snacks. Of course, making sure you have whole food based snacks on hand. A lot of that just comes from looking to see what's fresh at the farmer's market or, um, grabbing your favorite snacks from Trader Joe's, making sure you have lots of good snacks on hand. And then the last one is save the day supplies. So how do we make sure we're prepared for the inevitable? Like we've said before, stocking your pantry with those go-to items that you need when you need a quick dinner. All right. I like those all S's of course, cause we're in the South. So, um, <laughs> so gently rude. I just want to reintroduce you. So we're talking about meal prep made simple. I'm Angie Miller. This is strong mind, strong body. And generally rude owns, um, oh my gosh, I'm going to blank on it. Um, she owns raised on plants. Okay. And she and her husband have an app. And before we go, Jenna, I'm going to have you share how they could get a hold of you or if they want to tap into your app, 
what would be the best way for listeners to get more insight from you? Sure. We're so excited about what we've created and it's so much more than just an app. It's a community of, of families and people coming together that just really want to eat more plants, no matter where you are and your journey with that, whether you're already hundred percent plant-based or just honestly trying to get your kid to eat one piece of broccoli. <laughs> um, we love you and we are here to support you and you can download our app in the app store by just searching raised on plants. Uh, there's a lot of free content on there, but you can also upgrade to one of our um, all access memberships that unlocks the whole app for you and gets live cooking classes and um, happy hours each month. And then um, our website is raisedonplants.com if you want to learn more, or you can text strong since we're on strong mind, strong body podcast today, text the word strong to my business number. So it's really me. It's not a robot. It's 704-579-6429. So text strong 704-579-6429. And that will plug you into all of our resources and actually give you a discount code for our all access membership. Okay. Well, thank you so much. So, you know, Jen, I'm really glad you came on because I've always wondered about meal prep and going to these cooking events recently has kind of opened my eyes to um, different plant-based recipes that I never, ever would have thought about. And it always seems so complicated and you've kind of taken some of the mystique out of it. You and Talia, and it's been a lot of fun. It's also been, food is such a social thing. And so it makes a lot of sense that when you host events that involve food that different people make with different perspectives on what they enjoy, there were people who enjoyed baking, people who enjoy um, making salads, whatever it might be. So food is always such a social thing. I think it's a lot of fun to have food events. So Jenna, thank you for coming on. And thanks to all of our Strong Mind, Strong Body listeners. I'm Angie Miller. Thank you. Let me know if you have a question or if there's a topic you'd like me to cover. And we will see you next week. Thank you.